This undoubtedly may be one of the most shocking statements you will ever hear an alleged pastor say on pulpit. Now we all know that Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden by eating of the forbidden fruit and that's how the fall of man happened. Well, shockingly, all but angel says that Adam and Eve did not sin. It wasn't a sin to eat of the forbidden fruit. Uh, they, they, they simply thought they had sinned by disobeying God. It wasn't sin at all. Adam and Eve were just conscious of sin, but they hadn't sinned. The devil just introduced them to the word sin, but <laughs> that done nothing wrong. They were sinless as clear as day. Actually, God was even surprised they thought of it as sin because God didn't see Adam and Eve's disobedience as sin. So you see, the problem of God was never Adam and Eve sinned. It was who really told you you sinned? Because to me, this was not a sin. But to you, somebody introduced the word sin to you. So nowadays, under this message of grace, sin consciousness is the problem of God. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, so also death has passed on to all men, because all have sinned. So you see, the problem of God was never Adam and Eve sinned. It was, who really told you you sinned? Because to me, this was not a sin. Because to me, this was not a sin. You see, the problem of God was never Adam and Eve sinned. <laughs> nope. The problem God had with Adam and Eve is that they had sinned. That's exactly how the fall of man happened. Because Adam and Eve sinned. This man is a false teacher. He's... He, <sighs> For by one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners. Romans 5, 19. You see, the problem of God was never Adam and Eve sinned. It was who really told you you sinned? Because to me, this was not a sin. What Ubert Angel is teaching is called Luciferian dogmas, and this involves teachings such as there is no original sin, eating the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden was not a sin but a good thing because it enlightened man, it illuminated him, it awakened him to his God consciousness and so on and so forth. Because Luciferians don't acknowledge the concept of the existence of sin. They believe that what Christians regard as sin, because their Bible tells them that this or that is evil, is not evil but good. They deny to acknowledge sin as being sin. Surprisingly, in spite their denial of the concept of sin, they regard those who follow biblical truth as being wicked. Therefore, Luciferians have an upside-down concept of sin where what is sin is considered good and good is considered evil, further showing us just how so true scripture really is. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil who turn darkness to light and light to darkness. So you see the problem of God was never Adam and Eve sinned. In order to remove the concept of sin, Luciferians have to go all the way back to Eden and remove the premise that Adam sinned in Eden. Because it is through Adam that sin came into the world. You take that off the table and you're left with no concept of man's fallen nature, his total depravity, and most importantly, the need for Jesus as a savior. So you see, the problem of God was never Adam and Eve sinned. It was, who really told you you sinned? Because to me, this was not a sin. What the kingdom of darkness does is to send out false teachers and false prophets to start churches under the pretense of being ministers of the gospel, to use the advantage of disguise to fuse in Luciferian dogmas into mainstream Christian teaching. By disguising themselves as pastors and men of God, they introduce destructive heresies in the body of believers. Multitudes of people follow them under the delusion they are on the path to life, when all that awaits them is destruction. Because to me, this was not a sin. I would like to appeal to all those who are in Word Faith churches that the path you're on is the path to destruction, and that the gospel that people such as Ubert Angel are teaching you is from the depth of the world of the dead, 
itself. The true message of the gospel is this. Here's the gospel. You are a sinner. You have broken God's laws. You have lied. You have stolen things. You have taken things that do not belong to you. You have taken God's name in vain, so you're a blasphemer. You're an adulterer at heart at least because you have looked with lust upon other people. If you've ever done that, you're an adulterer. And just like when there is a, when we break laws on earth, there's a penalty to be paid. How much more so when we break the laws of God? But because we have sinned against God who is eternal, the punishment of that sin is also eternal. And if you die in your sin, you will very rightly and very justly go to a very real place that the Bible calls hell. The worm will not die. The fire will not be quenched. There will be wailing, weeping, gnashing of teeth. The full undiluted fury of God's wrath that burns against sin will be poured out on you for all of eternity. There will be no mercy, there will be no end. That is what your sins have earned you. And you cannot save yourself. There is no amount of good works that you can do to earn God's favor or to earn His forgiveness. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to make a way for you to escape His wrath. Jesus came to this earth, one person, two distinct natures, truly God, truly man. He never laid aside his deity, by the way, as Bill Johnson and Chris Valentin teach and others at Bethel. He never laid aside his deity. He never laid aside any of his divine attributes. Truly God, truly man, one person, two distinct natures. The God-man lived a perfect life to the perfect pleasure of God the Father. And then God the Son willingly laid down his life on the cross. His life was not taken, he gave it. And on the cross, this perfect person offered his perfect life as a perfect sacrifice to perfectly satisfy the perfect wrath of God. Died on the cross three days later, bodily raised from the dead, proving himself to be who he said he was, God in human flesh. And if you will repent of sin, turn from sin, and place your trust in the completed atoning work that Christ accomplished on the cross, you will be saved.